Thanks for watching another WP Hub site video. Uh, this video is to help you get started uh, updating the settings of your WordPress website. Uh, this is specific to the WP Hub site ecosystem. Uh, so hopefully you've had a chance to connect your HubSpot and uh, connect your domain if you're on the starter pro plans. Uh, but one of the things that you definitely want to do before you start going into too much visual updates on your website, that includes creating blog posts, pages, all of that stuff, uh, you definitely want to update your WordPress settings. Uh, this is essential because the format of when you create pages and posts is based off of some of these settings. There are things like your time settings, uh, stuff like that. So uh, in the settings menu over here on WordPress, uh, you can see there's general, writing, reading, discussion, media, permalink, and then some other settings. Uh, I'm just going to go through a few of these. Um, they're not all important to go through, but the first place you should start is general. So this is the general tab where you have some general site-wide settings. Um, some of these are pulled from when you signed up. You provided a site name. Uh, that's right here. Uh, tagline, that's just going to create a generic tagline for your site. Uh, but if you ever want to change these, you know where to come. Um, the site title is usually your business name. Uh, a lot of the SEO settings, it will take this site title and put it after the like title of a blog post, something like that. Uh, and the tagline, uh, you can use that in the header settings. Uh, can be used in various places in WordPress. Uh, it's not always that important though. In fact, I don't really use it that often. I prefer to control the SEO settings uh, better than that. Uh, and then, of course, your email address will uh, already be in there because you signed up with your email. So you want to make sure your email is in there. Uh, if there's any uh, system messages that you emailed, it'll go to that email address. Uh, this is another important setting you need to choose. Uh, you want to set your time zone. Uh, you can either choose a city or if you know the UTC time uh, code, then... Uh, then you can choose that. That's really important to set because there are things like experiments that are based off of time and they'll use your website's time. So you want to make sure that is correct. Uh, and as far as the date format, that should be okay as long if you're in the United States, uh, the default should be fine there. Um, but if you're anywhere else and you want the date format for like blog posts and things, uh, the default to be different, then you can change those here. Um, so once you change any of these settings, just make sure you click the Save Changes button. None of them are real time. They don't change as you click through boxes and choose stuff. You have to be sure to always click Save Changes. And there's not a lot of really important things to be changed in writing, but if you have preferences, then you can go through there and change any of those settings yourself. But there are some very important settings that I think are important to touch upon in the reading uh, section. So this is really important because it uh, because it controls how your website looks on the front end. So if you want your home page to just show the current blog post, maybe you just have a blog, that's all you do, then you can show your latest post. But most websites, you want to customize how it looks with the site builder and create pages, you know, like the home, about, services, things like that. Uh, so in that case, you probably are more likely going to want to choose a static page. Uh, and then you can choose any of your pages on your site uh, to act as the home page of your website. And you can change this at any time also. Uh, and then also you can create a blog post page. Uh, and of course you have to have the page created and then you can choose it from the list of pages. And so those are the, that's the most important setting to change. Another thing, your website by default is set not to index by search engines. That means search engines won't put your pages in its index. You'll never rank in search. Uh, that's by default uh, because your website was pulled from a template. Uh, but you definitely, once you get your website going and you start building it, you want to unselect this search engine visibility box. You do not want to discourage search engines from indexing your website. Uh, then your, web, your pages are never going to rank. Uh, and this other stuff, you can change it, but it's not absolutely necessary. Uh, but once you unselect this box, make sure you hit Save Changes to save those changes and make sure your website can be indexed by search engines. 
And another really important section of the settings uh, pages is discussion. This page has a whole lot of things you can update. Your template, the template for your website should have a lot of uh, the ideal settings in here, but of course you'll want to customize them to your needs. Uh, this middle one right here, allow link notifications from other blogs. Uh, this is in almost every circumstance. You should not have this selected. It's uh, almost more harmful than helpful. Uh, it's a great way to get a lot of spam on your blog posts. So uh, it's disabled by default. Just make sure you disable it unless you have a very specific reason to use it. Other than that, the defaults are pretty decent for this. Um, you can stick with those or make any other changes. This is the only one I recommend you leave off and don't touch. Um, so if you do get a lot of spam in your comments, uh, we implement ways to you know, keep spam, but of course it's not going to be 100%. Uh, so you can you can make sure uh, comments are blacklisted. You can add a name, a URL, email, IP address, anything in this box to blacklist commenters. Uh, and also, you can choose to show avatars or not. Uh, because this is WordPress, it by default uh, grabs people's gravatars, which uh, of course is from gravatar.com or .org, one of those two, and if somebody has a picture, their picture set up for their email address, then it's going to show in the comment section. Uh, and then if they don't have an image, you can choose one of these that will show. Uh, and then as always, make sure you click Save Changes, because uh, you don't want to lose uh, any changes you've made. So another important section that you definitely want to visit is media. And this determines how images are created on WordPress. So when you upload an image to WordPress, it's going to create uh, three different versions of it. Um, it'll, of course, keep the, the default uh, full resolution version. But then it'll also create a, a large size, a medium size, and a thumbnail size. And you can choose the dimensions for these here. Uh, so when you upload new images, it's going to uh, create them in these dimensions. And then if you choose this crop thumbnail to exact dimensions, it's going to create an exact square. So it'll cut off any part of your image uh, that you don't want. So it's going to create a little thumbnail square. These other sizes, it won't do that. It's going to go with the max width or max height for medium or large. Uh, it's not going to crop those, though. Uh, these settings generally are fine for the default. It creates good size images that are not too big and don't use up too much of your space nor slow down your website too much. Uh, anything too big and you could potentially create a very very slow website. So just to show you real quick what um, what the different sizes means, this is a blog post uh, and then you can see in the sidebar here you can actually choose an image size. So you can choose the full size, large, medium, or thumbnail. And if I choose a thumb thumbnail, see it created a little square for the image. Medium is going to be a little bit bigger, no bigger than 300 pixels wide or high, because this one's really wide. It's only 300 wide. Uh, and then large is 1,024 pixels wide. Uh, so you can see the different versions. And then full size is going to be, uh, you know, that's going to be the biggest image size. And then that also works for site builder pages. So if you're in the site builder and you drag an image on uh, and then select your photo, so there's a photo inserted, and again, there's this full, medium, and thumbnail. Uh, because the full, um, there is no large size. The largest is not big enough to create a large size. Uh, full size is the biggest, and medium is the next one down. So you can see I can actually choose different sizes right here in Site Builder. And you can do that for any image. Uh, so when, if you do change these settings, make sure you click Save Changes. Uh, so another, uh, probably the most important setting to make sure you set before you do anything else in WP Hub Site is permalinks. Uh, these settings are extremely important to change before you start creating pages or blog posts or setting up the, uh, the format of your page, you know, how the pages are laid out, the URL structure. Um, that, this is going to help determine that. And you don't want to go changing your, your URL structure once, uh, once you start establishing your website. Uh, so these permalinks, set them when you first create your website. 
but after you start making your website, do not mess with them. Uh, they're going to really mess with your search engine rankings and potentially uh, tank your rankings for anything you've established. So these are the settings for permalinks. Uh, the default is postname. In most circumstances, that's your best option. Uh, you, you shouldn't really have to change that. You don't want these big, long, uh, hard-to-read URLs with dates and months and years. And Of course, you don't want plain because this is just an ugly URL. It doesn't explain to the user anything. So I would recommend sticking with the default postname. And then you can also add bases for the categories. Um, so you can actually add bases to your categories. Of, this is, of course, optional. Um, you really, unless you have a specific reason to change this, I wouldn't recommend messing with these settings. Um, but once you've established your website, definitely don't mess with the settings. And then, of course, if you do make any changes for the permalinks, just make sure you click Save Changes. Even if you don't make changes, uh, like if uh, some pages aren't showing up properly or the URL structure is messed up somehow, uh, that shouldn't happen. But if it does, you can come into the permalink option here, or permalink settings, and you can click Save Changes without making any changes, and it'll fix a lot of those URL issues. And then you'll notice there are also Site Builder and Site Builder Pro options in the settings. Um, the defaults should be good for those, but there are going to be separate videos, more advanced videos for those. Uh, this is, of course, part of the Getting Started series, uh, so those aren't part of this because you don't need to change anything there to get started. Uh, this is all you need to do. Um, so this is going to be your general settings for your WP Hub site, WordPress website. Uh, so make sure you go in and at least change the general reading, discussion, media, and permalinks options. Make sure everything's dialed in exactly how you want it. Uh, and then make sure you save your changes after each one. Uh, also, if you want to go through the writing, then you can. There's a few little categories in here, not a big deal. Um, you know, you can choose the default post category. So when you create a blog post, it'll default to that category. Uh, and then default post formats. A lot of these, unless you're doing custom CSS, uh, formatting your website with cascading style sheets, they're not necessary. Uh, none of these are going to change your blog posts in any way, so really no need to change those, especially in the beginning. So that's all you need to do to update the default settings of your WordPress website. Um, and then once you do that, then we can start getting into creating pages and posts and all that good stuff. So thanks for watching this video, uh, and I hope you join me for the next Getting Started video for more information on setting up your WP Hub site. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.